Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the Paranormal Peeps podcast. Not the only paranormal podcast, but definitely the coolest. Uh, hope you enjoyed last week's episode about Richard Ramirez. Tonight, we're actually going to talk about uh, something tied into that uh, kind of ties into Richard Ramirez. Uh, we're going to talk about the infamous Cecil Hotel. Cecil, Cecil Hotel. Cecil. I've heard it both ways. <laughs> it's in La La Land. So once again, we do not have our fifth Elisa. Yes. She is missed. She's hosting family. Hopefully she'll be back for the next one. Hurry back. Yes, hurry Quickly. back. She was supposed to be like the headliner on this one. This was like her... And she ditched on us. Yeah, well, for good reasons. For good reasons. We, I'm just give her we've time. got her notes. <laughs> she sent her we're, notes. So. <laughs> we got this. <laughs> we'll do fine. And if we don't, then come back in two weeks. We'll have something else that's awesome. <laughs> but it will be a lot less dark uh, than the last two episodes. Yeah, 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 hopefully. No, I'm excited. There's a lot of people excited for our next episode. A lot of people. For our next episode? Yep. I don't For the remember one after this one. Well, we'll talk we'll about discuss it later. You can fill me in. Off air, but yeah, absolutely. I'm excited least, for it too, just to let you guys know. What I think is going to be our next episode, I could be wrong. Give me a piece of paper. I'll write in the back. But I know that this is one that I know a couple of people that are anxiously awaiting. I think I know what you're. I think I know what you're going to say. I have no idea. I'm going to be surprised. Yeah, I'll, you know what? We'll just, we'll just show up and whatever we do. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That will yeah, be a That's going to be a fun that's one. That's kind of, yeah. I'm not as excited for that one because I'm like, eh. But He's not okay. excited for it, but, but I, I am. I wasn't excited for Richard Ramirez. And, man, I had a lot of interesting stuff on that yeah. one. So. Yeah, I had to take a really good hot long shower after doing that one, though, because, uh, boy, I felt really dirty and wrong. Yeah. But I appreciate you letting me share the shower with you. That was awesome. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> and it's only a stall, too, so it was it was quite cool. Well, we have that big tub. Hey, but that's not a shower. You can still get clean. <laughs> that's true. That's Lisa's. That's mine. Oh, Okay. I was really She's looking at my computer screen, going, "What the heck are you?" Doing? I <laughs> I'm have, like, I know you don't have my notes. I have uh, I have two notes split screened on my computer here, okay. and I'm like, you I'm going to try to go through both of them. Okay, so we introduce ourselves. We okay, have... Lily. Okay, so we're <laughs> <laughs> going around the room here. We got. Josh. We're all giggly because it's late at night. We Who got, do we have? We have Josh, the lovely Josh, Hello. beautiful Josh, and Jamie, the amazing Jamie, Terry. The illustrious Terry <laughs> and the fat slob lame, named Mikey. <laughs> we all just got to eat some cake, so we're a little on a sugar high again. Oh, I'm eating Skittles and Reese's Pieces at the same time over here. We've all we've said this before. Is Jamie is really good at getting us on a sugar high when we get here. <laughs> That's what <Yeah>. I do. <laughs> and that, just, that just keeps us going, and then at the end of the night, we just crash. Yeah, I'm yeah, crash. I just really hope well. I don't crash until after I get home. Yeah, I get to well, drive home. We do home. too. <laughs> The Cecil Hotel. Um, did you guys know that there was one in London? No. So we're not going to talk about the Cecil Hotel in London. That one was a grand hotel built in the 1890s to the ni- ni- 1896 between the Thames and the Strand in London. The hotel was largely demolished in 1930s, and now it is the Shell House. The Shell House? The like, Shell. Like, like, gasoline. The Shell Mex oh, House. there you go. Gasoline. Yeah. 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 So, we're not talking about that one today. We're going to talk about the French one, Les Cicel. <laughs> Les Cicel. So, I think you've got the start of it, Josh. No, we're uh, the American one. Actually, in, in Jamie's Los got Angeles. the better start. Do I got the better start? You do. Okay. Go, well. Jamie! All right, Cecil Hotel. So, this hotel was built during the financial and cultural boom of the 1920s, and it officially opened its doors for business in 1927. Um. Its architecture featured opulent Art Deco-style lobby and iconic exterior sign advertising its high occupancy and low rates, which attracted many business and uh, leisure travelers um, who stayed as guests in the Cecil Hotel's 700 rooms. So essentially it's like the Motel 6 of 1920. Yes. Low rates. Low rates. Yeah, and Free cable. And what did you say the, the rates were? Okay, so it had 700 rooms, 300 of the rooms without... Any bathroom was just a bed, where like, a like dollar, a hostel, right? yeah, like a hostel. They'd sleep three, you know, four to six people in a room. A dollar fifty. Dang. 
200 rooms with a private toilet was two dollars, and 200 rooms with a private bath was two fifty. I'm spending my two dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I'm looking it, up the exchange rate right now. You know, do you think back in the you know 1927, sure. you know, what that would be worth nowadays? That's still kind of. I mean, what forty dollars, fifty dollars? Like it couldn't have been that much, right? I don't know. Good question. So wait, two dollars and fifty cents, right? Two dollars yeah. and fifty cents from nineteen twenty-seven. We're asking Bing. Bing. Cherries. Uh, Bing. We're looking at do, 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 thirty-one dollars and forty cents. Wow, it's close. Wow. Yeah. Wait, no, wait. Thirty-two dollars and eighty-eight cents. Thirty-two dollars a night. Year. You can't even get a Motel Six for that price. No, no, you can't. And this came with free cable, right? Free pool, free Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, sure, why not? Because it was invented in 1927. <laughs> yes. By, by Al Gore. <laughs> yes. And did you say how much it originally cost to build? Uh, I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. So it says the hotel featured a uh, decadent marble lobby, stained glass windows, potted palms, and an alabaster statuary. Uh, the 19th floor hotel saw a few... Prosperous years, uh, but when the stock market crashed, the once alluring hotel quickly became a place of disrepair. Uh, the Great Depression turned the area around the Cecil Hotel into Skid Row. Hey, now this is funny. Terry was showing me on on Google Maps earlier tonight where this hotel was at in La- in L.A. And like on Google Maps, it says Skid Row. Is like the, that like the name of the street? I think so. That's sad. I always thought it was like a term of like. This is the slums, or right? <laughs> you know, no, it's actually Skid Row. It is. It's it really Skid is. Skid Row, yeah. Where are you located? One, two, yeah. Three, and if you Skid, Skid Row, Row. <laughs> if you see the pictures of this lobby, it's two day. It's still two day. The lobby's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it definitely doesn't match the area in which is no, located. and it doesn't match the rest of the hotel either, or the clientele that lives there, right? No. Or has lived there. But no, we didn't. I don't think we had the the cost of. I don't think we have the cost of ri- what it originally cost to build it. The hotel cost one million to build okay. originally. Okay, one point five. Was it one point five? One point five. And then translated to the cost nowadays, it's fifteen thousand seven hundred and forty-two thousand fifteen million. Sorry. So that, <laughs> sorry, Terry's throwing her phone. Fifteen million seven hundred forty-two thousand three hundred and ninety-seven dollars and sixty-six cents. Wow. Yeah. So 15.7 million. That's crazy. That's a lot of money. That's, That's a, a lot of money. A lot of money. Who for had back money then? like that back then? Mm. Mobsters. Somebody did. The mob. So. Some very rich man had some money. <laughs> yeah, in fact, so in 2013, they were still using regular. Just a key on a keychain to get into the rooms. They hadn't t- converted it like to an the- actual metal key. Yeah, they hadn't converted it to hotel key cards yet at that point in time. Wow. And who knows if they ever will at this point? They have. If in that in that uh, Netflix t- uh, series, you could see that there was key cards to get into the bathrooms and oh. stuff like that. Now, cool. So, okay. So after the Great Depression turned the Cecil Hotel into Skid Row. It's low daily, weekly, and monthly rates. Uh, they dropped even lower, and uh, many around the city found themselves jobless. Um, so their rates fell even lower, and it attracted travelers, prostitutes, transients, as well as people on the run from the law. Basically, everybody lives on Skid Row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, Come and then, inside. And it's fun inside. There was, they were interviewing um, the manager of the hotel who managed it for about 10 years Um and she was saying, think of the Titanic, okay? They built this beautiful ship, this indestructible, supposed to be the most luxurious ship ever, and then it crashed right. and it sank. sunk. And that's exactly what happened. They built this beautiful hotel, and then you had the depression hit, and then it sunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's, a, I mean, that's a good comparison, though. It's a yeah. great comparison. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So... Uh, it became known as a place that serial killers could let their hair down. Uh, new owners in 2007, they went ahead and refurbished uh, parts of the hotel, spending a staggering $26 million, uh, in trying to transform parts of the hotel into a stay-on main, a boutique mid-priced hotel. 
I think Terry knows more about the... Yeah, well, what they did is they made a hotel inside of a hotel. Because <laughs> when they originally were going to try to remodel it, they were trying to get rid of like the permanent tenants and not have it be a long-term living place. And as they were you know, putting out eviction notices and stuff, the city came back and put like a, a, a stop, cease and desist, because the way that it was zoned and because of Skid Row, they had to allow those tenants to stay. And um, so they were getting such bad reviews for the Cecil Hotel. What they did is they made floors one and two of the hotel, the tenants, and then floors, I want to say three to seven was the stay on Main. And they actually made a completely separate lobby, separate entrance, everything for the stay on Main versus the Cecil Hotel. And then floors eight to 15 were still the Cecil Hotel. So depending on where you were staying, you had separate entrances. The only downside that they couldn't separate was the elevator. Right. Because the elevator went to all the floors. So and people would say they would walk in and see this, you know, beautiful lobby. But as soon as they got onto that elevator, it was like going through a time machine. Wow. <laughs> and then they get to their rooms. And I mean, they tried to remodel it and decorate it, but they had such little money to work with, you know. So first you paint it and you put new linens, but there's only so much, you know, you can do before the money runs out. Right. But you're talking... So they, they basically renovated, what, six, seven floors-ish, uh-huh. somewhere in there, in a lobby, in the $26 million. Yeah. That's a lot of money. And considering the fact that it was only built for, you know, $15 million, mm-hmm. and so they renovated it for almost double of what it originally would have cost to build. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, so even though they had the separate lobby and the separate entrance, you were still running into the tenants and the people staying at the Cecil hotel in the elevator. So there wasn't quite a separation as much as they wanted, but the people that were staying at the stay on main, they were started getting positive reviews It started, you know, bringing in more tourists that it was helping their revenue, having that stay on main part of the Cecil hotel. Positive Yelp review. Yeah. <laughs> positive. And then the Cecil, which is the other part of the building has like one star negative, negative stars. <laughs> yeah. So did you say that the, the the elevator was like grow old and gross and yeah, so it was like as bad as like the one at the Binion's Horseshoe. I don't Vegas. know if it was that bad. You know that? <laughs> that elevator was bad. It was scary to get on that elevator. I've never it's been in, the, in that. It's in the parking garage, and you take that to go down to like go to to Fremont Street. Oh, it's a horribly gross, yeah. and scary. That's where elevator. you it's like push going where like the light flickers a little bit, and there's like mystery stains everywhere. You push the button uh, with your shirt. Or with some thing no, else in your head. I never even thought about that. And then you no. stand in the middle and don't touch any of the walls because right. you're afraid you're going to stick to them. Right. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so you yeah. said it became a popular place for suicide, right, Jamie? I did not. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> I thought you did. Sorry. No, she said it became a place where serial killers could let their, their hair, hair down. down. Yeah. Okay, that's what it was. Which is kind of like the little segue into... Well, what if the serial killers <laughs> had short hair? <laughs> Well, they let their that one did. wigs down. Yeah. The wigs? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I didn't know they wore wigs. <laughs> so the hotel uh, was sold again to a New York hotelier named Richard Bourne in 2014 for $30 million. That's ridiculous. Right? It's not worth that much. It can't be. No. I mean, he had to have big plans for that if he purchased it for 30 million dollars oh he has huge mike's inhaling the skittles oh oh no is that what that was? i think it's the skittles and the peanut butter <laughs> it was the skittles just so i went to go to go speak it attacked you i inhaled oh. that's oh, what he no. did with scotch in the middle of scotland too oh i embarrassed us in scotland dude i've done that you, before I Utah fans look like a-holes <laughs> Because we're in my Utes hat, and I'm like, I don't, I was just trying to freeze. freeze. Wrong, pile, wrong, yeah. wrong pipe. Yeah. I've done trying, that with Hershey's he, chocolate syrup. Yeah. You just caught back here and you gag. Make sure oh that you God. can breathe. <laughs> yeah. No. Here. We can wait all the time you need. I think I'll be okay. 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 <laughs> I think so. But I forgot what I was going to say. It was cool, right. though. Well, I'm, I'm going to restart. Oh, I was going to say because of the real estate. It's because of the, that's yeah. what. The so land. 
Oh yeah, anything the property. In, in, in LA. The property. Are you kidding? Yeah. It's definitely yeah. not because of the location. Oh, it's definitely not. <laughs> <because> <laughs> it's, in it's, the state of, it's in the state of California. It's expensive. Everything's yep. there. Oh That's yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, it's like in that cheap Monopoly piece, Baltic Avenue or whatever that is. That really cheap ghetto. Yeah, but it's like it's like getting Baltic Avenue, but having to pay like board thirty lock, million boardwalk right? prices. <laughs> I have five hotels on it. <laughs> uh, so developer Simon Barron uh, subsequently acquired a 99-year ground lease in 2015. Um, however, its doors will remain closed for hotel guests for the at least from like the city? unforeseeable future. I don't know, but it, it, like I'm, I'm guessing it's probably from the city. It's closed for the foreseeable future. It's closed for the foreseeable future. So they had some big plans to do renovations. They closed it in 2017 to renovate the building. Uh, but due to COVID and, and other delays, they're just not able to get the renovations done. So this is a, a statement from, from Barron. It says, we have no intention right now of reopening the hotel. Originally, we were going to rebuild the whole thing and build a hotel with apartments. However, right now, as construction was scheduled to begin, COVID-19 started sweeping through the nation and the entire globe, so we never really got started. Uh, it's tough to build a hotel during COVID. Well, that's like hard to do anything during COVID. Especially in California. <laughs> right? <laughs> They've been shut down for over a year. Yeah. Um, you said there's a lot of more difficult things going on in the world than that decision. Um, it didn't have a, a set design plan before and the entire project has been placed on the back burner with no expected timeline for reopening he said there may be some new upgrades once summer rolls around but for now it's tabled hmm. so isn't that just like a big lost investment then yes it and is you paid 30 million dollars oh and yeah now it's just oh yeah now you eat not it. getting anything off of it yeah right oh to be rich yeah. Uh, it's been 30 million. <laughs> we'll let it sit for a while uh, that's chump change we'll let it percolate <laughs> yeah but you got to figure, you know, because the the property's worth so much money, right? Even if you sit on that property and not it's do just anything with it, yeah, it's just going to appreciate because real estate's you know valuable. Even on there. Skid Row, yeah. So, and they're even talking crazy enough. They're talking about putting in uh, like a pool on the roof. <laughs> That's, that's, that's you will all understand that's, by the time this episode is over why that is the poor taste. dumbest idea to do for this hotel. <laughs> do an indoor pool on the first floor. If you don't know the story of this hotel, you will know why. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is just awful. And, you know, you got to wonder, too, though, like, well, even if they, like, let's say they gut the whole thing and they put in marble everything and they make this. Turn it into a Ritz-Carlton. Yeah. Do you think they're ever going to get past like all of the the death and pain and nope. sorrow that this building has absorbed over the years? You got to think of all of the energy that has been left there from everything that's happened. But even the neighborhood, just the going neighborhood, back to the neighborhood, where I it's mean, at. Oh yeah, it's maybe the Ritz Carlton, but if it's like a war zone, getting to it, mm-hmm. no one yeah. wants to go there. <laughs> Nobody wants to go there. So that is the uh, the wonderful and brief history of. Of the, the Cecil Hotel the building. Now that the building is out of the way, yeah. Let's talk about the fun, scary stuff. Well, let's start with um, <laughs> all the deaths that have happened in this hotel. It became such a popular location for suicide, and so many people had jumped off the roof that the owners of the adjacent parking lot actually sued the hotel for all the bodies that was landing on their parking lot. Oh my word! That's how bad it's. How bad. It was. Do we have any information on how that lawsuit came I out? I don't have any information about how that I'm lawsuit really came out. I'm actually intrigued to know. <laughs> you can try to find if you can, but I couldn't find anything other than that they sued the hotel. Yeah, I, I, I didn't even come across that. The, the thing that's crazy is it didn't take long for the first death nope. in that building. Not at all. Um, I don't think we know exactly how long, but because... Yeah, we don't have an opening date. We just have a year. Right. But the first death was January 22nd of 1927. And it opened in 1927. Mm. Opening year. Yeah. So we're talking opening month, maybe. Maybe. You know, I mean, heck, sadly enough, it could have been opening day. Yeah. Who knows? So, uh, unfortunately, a 52-year-old man by the name of Percy 
or- Ormond Cook committed suicide in the hotel room after failing to reconcile his relationship with his wife and child. Yep. It shot sad. himself. Yeah, it's super, super sad. Okay, and the second death was in November, November 19th of 1931. It was a guy by the name of W.K. Norton. He was 46 46 years old, and he died from poison ingestion. He took capsules full of poison. Don't know what poison. And not sure what type of capsules, but I'm thinking like like rat poison. Probably. Which is just... Mm Mm-hmm. Not cool. How's the next one? Well, I think everybody just carried around bottles of poison in their pockets. <laughs> right? I do. Well, it's just like they used to carry those little snuff tins, too. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. Snuff tin, poison tin. You know, it's all Well, maybe they of... got it mixed up. I don't know. <laughs> well, let's see. I got some here that I don't have a lot of details on. Um, but in 1934, Benjamin Dodich... Uh, committed suicide by gunshot. Yep. And then in July of 1934, Sergeant Lewis Borden slashed his throat in his hotel room. And plenty of suicides continued through the 50s and 60s. 60s, and it became known as the Suicide Hotel. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I found a stat here that they said there were... Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but they said there were only 16 deaths that occurred in and around the building, which sounds like there might have been more, uh, especially with the lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 12 of those were suicide. Mm-hmm. So you're like 90% death in that building is by suicide. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is just absolutely crazy. Um, and so in night. That was like Sergeant Lewis weird, Borden. Some weird dates here. Uh-huh. Uh huh. 1938, Grace E. Magro fell from the building. Yeah, ninth story window. Her fall was was broken by telephone wires that had gotten wrapped around her body. So the firefighters had to go up there and get her down. And then she later died in the hospital. And police were never able to determine if it was an accident or if it was suicide. How would it be to have your fall broken by telephone wires? Ow. Ow. <laughs> you just Well if if you're gonna jump, I mean I think when you when you jump, I think you're expecting to hit that high ground pretty hard and so to have it broken. Mm-hmm. By I mean, wires? Well not is that painful. I don't know if she, if there was any kind of sparking or electric electrical stuff going on, but still just like ow. Yeah. And then you die. And then you die. Yeah, you're expecting something quick and painless, relatively speaking. Um, but then, then you get, get that uh, and then in 1939 a uh, 39 year old Irwin sorry how are you, how oh are you? I had one before that sorry uh, sorry 1938 do you still have yours before that too? do you have Roy Thompson that's who I'm, that's okay, who I'm yep, looking at go for it. you get Roy Thompson a 38 year old jumped from the top floor of the building and landed on the skylight on the building next door yep and he was a marine which I think is funny. You have a couple military through here that committed suicide. So it makes you wonder if it was like some kind of a PS, PTSD, PTSD situation yeah. they were going through. or I wonder if Sergeant Borden was related to Lizzie Borden. Right. Yeah, Just I wondering. don't know. Well, 1938 would have been in between World War One and World War Two. Yeah, because you have so. Sergeant Borden. Now you have a Marine. And then the next one um, in 39 was Erwin C. Neblet, 39-year-old Navy officer. Who ingested poison. So oh. another poison. Another. And another military. Ugh. And then in 1940, you had a teach a 45-year-old teacher by the name of Dorothy Sager, who also uh, ingested poison. Yep. Where are they all getting it? I don't know. Hey, at the Cecil Hotel and the vending machine, you can get Oreos. Like I said, or it's like poison. it's like everybody carries around a little bottle of poison. It's <laughs> mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's almost like a Looney Tunes cartoon, <laughs> right? It was yeah. all probably Acme brand. See, now the next one is probably one of the more popular ones that a lot of people know of. Was the 1944 with Dorothy Jean Purcell? It's also probably the saddest one. Yeah, 
So she was a 19-year-old that was staying there with her boyfriend. Who was 38. Yeah, who was 38. He was a jerk. Um, she woke up to some major pains, not quite sure what was going on. So she went to the bathroom because they were in a room without a bathroom, went down the hall, ended up giving birth to a baby boy. She was unaware that she was even pregnant, which is even makes it worse because how could you be 19 and not know you're pregnant? Um, she thought the baby was born dead. She didn't know what to do with it because she knew that if she went back that her boyfriend would have gotten upset with her. So she dropped the baby out the window Aww. and uh, he fell. Um, they actually ended up naming him jo- John Doe number 13 because he was never named. Um, when they did the autopsy, he had air in his lungs, so they knew that he was alive and he was breathing, so he wasn't born, stillborn. Um, when she got put on trial, she pled not guilty, and she was found not guilty for reason of insanity. So she didn't even get charged for the murder. Jeez. I don't know how you can get that plea work. Yeah. Seems like everyone can get that plea. Back in the 40s, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Before they had real psychiatrists. Yeah. Yeah. See, now next, I don't know if you, I, I, I'm pretty sure you guys don't have this. Because remember how I told you the Black Dahlia was there? Oh, right. I, yes. I Did saw a thing on the, that she had actually, um, was at the bar. She never stayed there, but she was at the bar getting drinks. And yeah, so Elizabeth Short um, had been at the bar for drinks in January 1947. And then she was later known as the Black Dahlia had actually died. I don't know if it was like the next day or somewhere within that time where she was spotted at the bar there. That was the so that bar was the last time she was seen alive. Uh huh. And then she was gone after that. Yeah. Creepy. Yeah, super creepy. You know, if it was like fifty years later, we could have a, sus- a good suspect for it, but right. But uh, it's still too early. Match. Timeline yeah, just don't match. Do not match. Mm-hmm. He would have been nine. Because there was. Ramirez would have been nine. Which he was pretty messed up by that point. <laughs> he was. Yeah. Um, and then I've got a. Uh, I don't know what day we're on now. Okay, that was 1947. There we go. So then I got a Robert Smith. Yep. Uh, age 35, jumped from the seventh-story window and died. Yep. He missed the poles. And then uh, 54? Yeah. October 22nd, 1954, Helen Gurney. Um, she actually checked in under the name of Margaret Brown, but that was an alias because that's actually the unseekable Molly Brown that, you know, everybody's heard of. That's all right. Terry used to do that. We used to go to, like, the pie pizzeria, and she'd give, like, famous hockey players names. <laughs> I, I would never give right? a real name. <laughs> What's your name? Martin Brodeur. <laughs> Funny, you don't look like a Martin. <laughs> I actually used to do a lot of the grizzly hockey players. So you, Rich Perrant. Mick Vacuda. <laughs> Steve Vesna. <laughs> and uh, anyways, so it's kind of like, who was she hiding from to check in? She checked in with a famous person's name. So, but um, she was 55 I'm years Clint old. Eastwood. And she stayed in room 704. And she actually jumped from the window and landed on the hotel's marquee is where she landed. So that was like almost right out the front, the front right of the off, building. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'd be nailing windows shut by now, right? You know, and that's why I'll, there's a lot of hotels now that the windows the never windows open. The windows open, yeah. or if they do, you get like two that, inches. Yep, yeah. <laughs> if you're lucky, if you open those that's windows, people can jump out. Yeah. Uh, in '62, you had a Julia Francis Moore, age 50, who jumped from the eighth floor. I noticed a lot of like lower floor jumpers. Yeah. So when she was found on the second story interior light well, and a lot of people claimed that a lot of these suicides were because people were down on their luck. They were poor. They didn't have money. But she actually had $1,800 in her bank account when she, di- when she jumped, which is a lot of money for 1962. It's a lot of money now. It's a lot of money now. I'd love to have $1,800 no, no, in my bank account. Money, right? <laughs> but... But yeah, so obviously she wasn't poor by any means in that time frame. Oh, this. 
<laughs> what you got? So I looked. No, I couldn't find one. anything on the interwebs about uh, this lawsuit. All I could find was about one famous case that we're going to talk about. Lots of lawsuits about that one. Huh. Um, but nothing about another hub property. I probably didn't dig very far. Th- this next one is... Um, and it's Bing. What do you want? It, it's interesting because you have a double. Oh, yeah. The two people died on the same day, October 12th. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so Pauline Otten, age 27, got into an argument with her husband. So to teach the guy a lesson... She I'll jumped, show him. She jumped from the ninth story building. Ninth story window. And fell 90 feet and landed on a 68-year-old man who just happened to be walking by. Yeah. See, and at first, they weren't quite sure if maybe it was, like, a double jump and they were committing suicide together, but... Yeah, 27-year-old Paulina and 65-year-old yeah. George Giannini. So, but upon and jumping together. more research, apparently, this is this is the odd, funny part. You lose your shoes when you jump off a building. <laughs> so the way they knew that he didn't jump is he still had his shoes on. <laughs> I, 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 I never thought I that you didn't have wrap, shoes on. I can't wrap my brain around that, honestly, because I haven't dealt with a whole lot of people that have like jumped no, off it, buildings it's, it's and committed kind of suicide. True. I, I've but, seen that. But that was how they kind of figured out that he was on the ground and she landed on top of him and killed him. Just look for the... For, you got forensic evidence, right? But he also had his hands in his pockets at the time of his Yeah, death. he had his hands in his pockets, too. Had he jumped his so shoes... So apparently you're not going to jump with your hands in your pocket until hands your shoes on. His pockets. <laughs> yeah, I can't... Yeah? Like, even, like, jumping into, like, the water and stuff like that, right? You don't jump with your and, hands... And he's like... Yeah. Do down. I need an umbrella, dear? When you jump in the water, you jump with your nose. You plunk your nose when you jump in the water. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> So if you're going to jump off a building, be polite and holler Geronimo first or look out below. I don't know, something. (laughs) Scream the whole way down. Of course, if he was old, if he wasn't moving very fast, maybe he wouldn't have got out of the way anyway. I don't know. Maybe he stopped, looked up in fear and said, oh, my gosh. I honestly don't even think he saw it coming. I think she just landed right on him. Well, ninety feet will happen in 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 like two, three seconds. So it's it's not going to take long for her to make contact so whatever I've seen movies that takes like 10 seconds for them to fall that far that's because they shoot it from 17 different angles and, and yeah, but make you wait like good example of that is Wiley Coyote sometimes he doesn't even fall no he does he holds up the sign uh oh and yeah, and, <laughs> and then looks yeah, down and then yeah. falls yeah it doesn't happen that way in real life I've tried it doesn't work you yeah. <laughs> have <laughs> jeez hold up several signs uh oh this was <laughs> a bad idea <laughs> And then goodbye. But I'm falling anyway, so it's like that doesn't work. <laughs> All right. Sad though. Oh, it's so yeah, sad. Especially sad. where it's like you know, if people are trying to kill themselves, I mean, and he's just innocently a passing of, yeah. by, he's just out for a pleasant yeah. roll. He's just out for a pleasant roll down the street. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is where everybody wants to walk. He was probably walking back home from buying drugs from a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Maybe then... that was God striking him dead. <laughs> um, I hope not. Oh, we've got a sugar high. Yeah. So, and then the next one was October 12th of 1962. Her name was... No, wait. Sorry. June of 64. June 4th of 1964. Um, it was Goldie Osgood. She was also known as Pigeon Goldie. She was a 65-year-old who had kind of retired at the hotel as a, you know, just a tenant there. And she would spend her days feeding the pigeons in the park and cheering on her Dodgers. Um, she was found dead in her room. She had been raped, stabbed, strangled, and robbed. And her murder remains unsolved. They had actually arrested a guy who was covered in blood at the park, thinking that he is the one that had killed her, but they could never make the connection. And so her was murder that, is still left unsolved. Was that Jacques uh, Elvinger? Yes. Yeah. Why are you covered in blood, sir? You know. <laughs> Typical <Skid Row>. Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Just happens. Like Skid Row gets blamed for a lot. On this, well, it's easy to. It is easy to. I mean, because Skid Grove really was just a dumping ground. I mean, people would get checked out of mental institutions, and they would just go and drop them off and drive away, and just leave them there. Because that whole Skid Row area is where, like, where a lot of the um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Prostitution. Murder. Well, there was prostitution. Drugs. There was murder. There was the homeless homeless shelters. We're all right there. It's all kind of like this block area. And so that's why the Skid Row was created there was because of all the homeless shelters and and you're trying to run a hotel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think that I remember the I think I remember the documentary talked about the police presence 
and it was very non-existent. They actually blocked off that area, so like they knew th- what Skid Row was. They just kind of mm-hmm. like let it go, like jazz. Yeah, yep. just let it go, and they just let them kind of do their own thing. Uh, in 1975. Yep. Yep. Uh, December 20th, a woman who was thought to be 23 jumped from the 12th floor. Uh, she had registered at the hotel a week earlier underneath, under the name of Allison Lowell, but her real name, her real identity isn't known and, well, it's not solved. Yeah, it was, it was a fake name. She was actually staying in room 327, so she was actually on the third floor, but she jumped from the 12th, so. From whose window? I don't know. Well, she could. I mean, it could have been the fire escape. It right? could have been the fire escape. It could have been anything from the twelfth floor. But she was staying on the third floor. So. Next up is September first, nineteen ninety-two. Okay, well, that's if you want to keep going with all of the m- murders, because Ramirez is next, actually. Oh, okay. If you're going timeline. So if we want to keep going with the, I well, we, can go, we can go on the timeline. We can go. We can talk about the Night Stalker staying at the hotel. Okay. So then, after Allison Lowell, you come to the summer of 1987, which was a big summer for California. We talked 85. about this. No, 1985. I said yes. 87, didn't I? Yeah. You did. Okay, 85. Um, we talked a lot about the summer of 85 on our last podcast. Um, Richard Ramirez stayed at the Cecil Hotel while he was committing most of his murders that summer. Um, he stayed on the top floor for one and a half months, and he paid $14 a night for his hotel, for his room. Um, he was known to strip in the alleyway behind the hotel after he'd committed his murders and leave all of his bloodstained clothes in the dumpster and then walk to his room in his underwear. And a lot of the people in the hotel there just didn't really bat an eye at that because it was common to see people hallucinating high on drugs walking around half naked in the hotel he walks in there's like hey ricky what's up <laughs> like you're covered in blood again cool so I mean, he never committed any of his killings at the hotel i'm pretty sure that he did a lot of drugs and locked himself in his room at this hotel but the question is is did the dark energy within this hotel affect him while he was staying there i'll bet it did i'm sure it did we got to wonder too, like it may have affected him in that avenue, but like you got to figure he probably gave it as more than he got it. Yeah. I'm sure he put out just as much negative energy there as he received. Yeah. So, and you you know, I mean, it's funny because like he was stealing at that time, right? He was stealing what, about 18, 15 to $1,800 a week. For his cocaine habit. For his cocaine habit. (laughs) Uh So all he could afford was $14. A night in his hotel. Yeah. And he was on the top floor. Penthouse. Yep. Penthouse suite. But, you know, if you listen to the last show, uh, we did talk a lot about some of the things that uh, he went through with the, the seizures and the, the, the dreams about the monsters and stuff. And I'm sure that there was plenty of negative energy or negative entities mm-hmm. in that building that would prey upon... And feed off of him. ...that altered state. Even when he was high, you know, cocaine, heroin, whatever it was on, I think that those things would totally feed, you know, take that opening and convince him to do more and more. Yeah, 100%. Feed off of it. Okay, now you have the second serial killer that was there, kind of in his homage to Richard Ramirez. See? Yeah. This guy has no... Sh- he has short <laughs> hair. The The interesting thing is... Uh, I've never heard of this guy. I've never heard of this guy either. Really? But, yeah, never. Have you heard of him? Yeah. You had? Well, I have now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know before the research on this? Bef- maybe I've heard of him, but... <laughs> Well, it, it, maybe it's one of those things because he's not an American born. He's not American born, and he only killed four in the U.S. Yeah, so like, so he might have just kind of been under the radar. Yeah, I think so. Because then he got extradited. He's like barely even a serial killer. Like, well, in the here US, yeah. in the yeah. U.S. <laughs> but his name was uh, Jack Unterwager. Unterwager. Wagger. Unter. Wigger. He's Austrian. Jack Hefferweiser. It it would be Unterwagen. 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 He was a journalist from Austria that stayed at the hotel. He was writing a story about red light districts in LA. Uh, Skid Row, I mean, obviously, is where this hotel is is located and is known for being a hotspot for sex workers. Because that's just gross. Um, Unterwagen. 
uh, was investigating this in the area and even went on drive-alongs with police. He would regularly engage with police and sex workers and even had sex workers come and visit him in his room at the CISA hotel. With the police officers. And all for 50 bucks a <laughs> night. Kidding. It was uh, a party, dude. <laughs> he was becoming a well-known face in the area. Uh, some would say a celebrity. Um, unknown to everybody else, everyone in the States, he uh, was a convicted killer and rapist in Austria. So in 1974 in Austria, he was sentenced to over the sexual assault and murder of a young woman. He was released in the 1990s and got his job as a journalist. Well, because while he was in prison, he actually wrote his story. And that's how he became such a famous journalist. By writing an autobiography? Yep. While in jail. For committing a rape and murder. Yep. And then he had all kinds of groupies, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Just like Ramirez did. Uh, people thought he was a man who had changed his ways. Almost instantly in the area he was living, women began going missing and being found dead. He was the main suspect in these crimes, so he fled to America, and the murder stopped in Austria and then picked up in L.A. Do you know what his M.O. was? How they knew which ones he murdered? They were the prostitutes? Well, they were the prostitutes. He would strangle them with their bras. That's how they knew that it was him, because that was kind of what he would left behind. He would leave them strangled with their bras. I would almost think in Skid Row they weren't wearing any. <laughs> That's just what I'm imagining in my head. I'm just, you know, I, I kind of thought the same thing actually. <laughs> They're wearing like yoga pants, short things, and like I don't even know. Well, that would have been the '90s. It would have been yoga Tiny pants, tank top. It would have been like uh, mini skirts and yeah, tank tops, halter tops, halter tops. That's what the yeah, that's what the uh, all the movies showed us in the '90s, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I saw Pretty Woman. <laughs> right? That was 90s. That was L.A. too. Ooh. Oh, true story. Um, <laughs> Hollywood, true Hollywood story. It's <laughs> <laughs> a real show. Uh, so police uh, ended up catching uh, Unterwegen in Miami after tracing his credit card. Uh, he was eventually extradited to Austria, and despite maintaining his innocence, he was found guilty of nine murders. Uh, and then just after hours of his sentence, he committed suicide in a cell at the age of Couldn't 43. face his own. He Epstein'd it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, he killed three in California and then killed one in Miami. So he only killed four in America. Not only, but still that's considering nine in Austria. Yeah, so it puts him 13. Yeah. That puts him right in line with uh, uh, Ramirez in the, in the body count. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be interesting if they had stayed there at the same time, though? I mean, I know they're like a decade apart almost. Yeah, well, they'd say that he stayed there kind of in an homage because of Richard Ramirez who stayed there. Interesting. Do we have it written anywhere what room these guys stayed in? No, I just know that Richard Ramirez was on the top floor. Is there a Richard Ramirez suite? Doubtful. I don't know. Pay extra for that one? Because people would. Oh, some they people would, would now. Yeah, yeah they would it's now. It's like that room on the Queen Mary that's like crazy expensive. That's the most haunted. Because it's the most haunted one. Yeah. yeah, you know there's some dark energy in that room. Oh, and yeah, with the with the um, the love of the paranormal now, oh, yeah. like people would, you, would. Would you stay in that room? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I don't know if I'd want. I to. I would. I would. Jamie's like, heck could, yeah. Could you sleep in that room? Yes. It would take me a while, but eventually. <laughs> I would be hit the pillow asleep. <laughs> You're like that anywhere. I know. <laughs> I mean, I know even if he's there, he's still just a ghost. He can't really do much to you, but still. Oh, they can torment you pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I'm a bit more of a wuss. I was like, I don't know. Thing is, is the way, with the way he was as a human, like he's, he's sitting there watching you anyway. Well, then you're going to start feeling. Uh, no. Yeah. No. 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 That's where you put uh, uh, some, I don't know, some extra protection on your uh, body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, right. That could be a lot of things, by the way. I, I know. I, Sorry, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have a. I, I didn't have a good, uh, a, a good thing to say. So I know that's why I stepped in. So Got to stop this one before it gets out of control. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, and so, and then in 1992, uh, an unidentified man was found lying dead in the alley behind the hotel, and it's believed that he either fell, jumped, or was pushed out of the window on the 15th floor. Yeah, he's still unidentified. They still have not identified him. But he was 20 to 30 year old. Yeah. Puddle. That's about all we can tell you. 20 to 30 year old puddle. <laughs> yeah. It's 
So, and then the next most famous one was in 2013. Before yeah. we get to that one, though. Let's skip over that one. We're going to come back to that one because the, la- the most recent one happened in 2015. On June 13th, a 20-year-old man was found outside the hotel. Some suspected that he may have had... C- he may have committed suicide by jumping from the hotel, but the county coroner informed LA Times that the cause of death had not been determined. So they don't even know how he died. He was just outside the hotel. So they don't know if he fell from the hotel, if he overdosed and died on the sidewalk by the hotel. They don't have much information. Yeah. Well, but if they if he jumped, I mean, he's going to have a whole bunch of broken bones and liquefied innards. You would think, but after watching all of these, you know, Fast and Furious movies, you don't break bones when you fall. That's because they're so accurate. <laughs> you ever go look into Hollywood to tell it's the truth? You can also do flips in a semi. <laughs> but you haven't done that before? I tried it once. <laughs> I didn't make it all the way over. So, but to kind of bring in the paranormal aspect of it, um, guests that have stayed there have reported seeing dark figures in their rooms. There has been reports of like extremely cold, cold spots around the hotel. Um, there's unexplained noises, ghosts pulling sh- um, their sheets off of them while they're sleeping. Um, a lot of women have had heard a baby crying. So I don't know if this is that one baby that was dropped from the window. So there's a lot of um, mystery on part of the reason why so many of these women that have fallen out of windows, they think they might have heard the baby crying. So they're like poking their head out the window to see if they can find a baby, kind of try to comfort this baby that they're hearing, and then something's pushing them out of the window. Maybe the baby trying to get revenge from his mom dropping him out the window. That's called defenestration. (laughs) (laughs) Um, One guest claims that he was being choked by a ghost in the middle of the night while he was sleeping. So he went to the lobby and demanded to be moved to another room. Once he got settled in the next room, he slept the rest of the night just fine. But in the morning, he found out that his original room was where one of the murders had taken place. Ooh. So maybe when this place reopens, if it does, we need to go. I would love to, honestly. <laughs> I'll stay over at the condo by Disneyland with the kids. <laughs> I'll babysit. You guys can go spend oh. the night up there. Oh, this is only 40 minutes from Disneyland. That's amazing. And some of the locals have actually dubbed it as the actual Tower of Terror. <laughs> I could see why, <laughs> though. Right? Yeah. Well, you know, here's the, here's the interesting thing. So I, in the research that I, I went through and looked up, they said there were only 16 deaths. But when like the hotel manager was interviewed, he said that between 2007 and 2017, there's been at least 80 deaths in the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. When wow. she was first hired and they were walking around, she was walking around with the maintenance guy. He was like, there's been a death here. There's been a death here. There's a death here. She's like, is there any rooms here that there hasn't been a death in? Cause there has been so many deaths in this hotel, you well, know? And these are only the ones that we actually know that are reported and recorded. Like, you know, she said there's what between, 70 to 80? Yeah, but eight, at least 80. At least what, 80? But see, these are probably just all the suspicious ones like that. Murders or suicides. I mean, uh, yeah. old people die all the time and all over the well, place. Well, and there's a lot of drug overdoses that happen yeah. there. Yeah, I imagine there's a ton you of know, drug she overdoses. She was talking about how many times a day she would have to call 911 just because of the, the people yeah, that stayed so, in this hotel. Yeah, makes sense. Oh, no, it makes total sense. It's just interesting when you think about it, right? Because you're like... Well, how many people have died in the Cecil Hotel? And people are like, well, there's only 16 deaths. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, you start looking deeper and you're like, no, there's a lot more than 16. I think it'd be interesting to find out from pretty much any hotel you stay in how many people have died there. Yeah. True. And in some cases, do you really want to know? No. Nope. I'd prefer not to. So we skipped over the most. I would say the most famous death in the building. Yeah. That's the only one I could find all the lawsuits on. This is the one we're circling back to February of 2013. Go ahead. Okay. So um, February 19th of 2013, Elisa Lamb was a 21-year-old. Um, at this time, she was found naked in the water tank on top of the hotel. Hence why putting a pool on top of the hotel is a very bad idea. Such a bad yeah, idea. Lisa Lamb Memorial Pool. <laughs> she, yeah. had been, she had gone missing for almost three weeks um, before she was found. But the creepy thing is the whole circumstances that happened before she went missing. Yeah. So... She checked in on January 26th in 2014, and she checked in to the stay on Main side yeah, of so the hotel. Yeah, so she was not part of the... T- yeah. Right. So she wasn't part of the 
The Cecil Hotel. She the was on the stand. The seedy island. side of yeah. the hotel. Supposedly. Suppo- yeah. <laughs> so early in her stay, she was relocated from a shared room to a private room. Because the people in that shared room were complaining about how erratic and like Weird. strange she was how acting. strange she was yeah well, she was canadian so i mean they're just a different <laughs> breed that's it's true they are different they're but, odd ducks yes. for sure um but then she was last seen on january 31st um her parents uh who had been you know talking to her daily quickly reported her missing so when they started looking in her room they found her wallet id laptop her medications all just sitting in the room yeah, she'd left everything in there. She left everything. Um, which obviously is a, you know, nowadays you, you look at it and you're like, well, that's usually a, a sign of like bad things because people just don't usually go missing with that without taking their stuff, right? They don't, int- yeah. If they intend to come back, they don't just leave everything. Right. Behind. You know, or they, if they were taken, they, you know, they're not going to be grabbing their stuff. Yeah. And well, the hotel didn't even find it suspicious because people leave stuff behind all the time so they just bagged up her stuff and put it on a shelf yeah didn't even think anything of it until she was reported missing and you know jamie had I mean, jamie's worked in hotels before and that's exactly what they do isn't it yeah we're required to bag everything up and label it and put it on a shelf in the back room for so long yeah mm-hmm. and the, the, yeah. and then there's after no a thought. month it's yours <laughs> 90 days actually dentures <laughs> right underwear underwear <laughs> Other miscellaneous uh, marital aids. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I have stories, but that's for another time. <laughs> uh, so the LAPD put out a bulletin uh, about Lamb's disappearance, mes- mentioning that she spoke both English and Cantonese, uh, and that she used public transportation, possibly having mild depression, which is insane, um, considering the fact that she was bipolar. Um, and was ultimately heading to Santa Cruz, uh, California. Yeah, she was on this big, huge, long trip on her own for the first time. Um, convinced her parents to let her go. She's 21. I'm an adult. I want to adventure out there and experience life. So she originally had actually taken a train from Canada down to San Diego and stayed at San Diego first. Yep. And then she had posted pictures on, on her Facebook of going to the San Diego Zoo. And then she went from San Diego to the Cecil Hotel. And then she went... And then this, yeah, they actually ended up doing like a, a search for her. They searched the hotel. They put up flyers all over. They did a press conference with her parents. They were doing everything they could to find her. Yeah. And she just seemed to completely vanish. Mm-hmm. The interesting thing is the last known footage of her is from the security camera in the elevator. And, and if, if, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'd say if you have not seen this, go watch it oh, yeah, right it, now and then come back. It's all over YouTube. It is not hard to find this video. Um, but you can see her, you know, in the video. She's acting erratic. She even steps out of the elevator and, like, looks down the hall. And actually, it looks like she's actually talking to somebody. Yeah, and her hands are, like, moving like, moving in erratic ways and not normal. And it's, it's creepy. Really creepy to watch. Super creepy. Because, like, at first she seems fine. But then the door doesn't shut, and then she jumps back in, and she kind of hides in the corner like she's trying to hide from somebody. And then she keeps peeking out, like, looking at something, and you're like, what's out there? And sadly, there's no camera in the hallway. Nope. So, I mean, this obviously leads to people thinking that there was an abduction, or Mm -hmm. uh, other people have speculated that she's seeing spirits, and she's talking to ghosts, and that this was a, like, a paranormal uh, phenomenon that was happening. Um, others, uh, if you look at the rest of the evidence, think she's probably having a psychotic episode. Yeah, uh, that's going on. So now the part that Terry alluded to. So on February nineteenth, a maintenance worker was accessing the roof uh, because there was complaints of foul smelling and tasting water. Discolored. It was discolored. Yeah, foul tasting. They had low water pressure. Right. So this led them to go up to the, the roof where there's four big water tanks up there. See, and and they had already searched the roof at one point in time for her. Mm-hmm. Right. They searched the roof, but, but not they the didn't towers. But look in the water tanks. <laughs> right. No one thought to go look in the water tanks. Yeah. Um, and so one of the, the workers looked into one of the four by eight foot access hatches to the tank. And there was at least a lamb's body 
floating in the water. Yeah, floating naked in the water. Yeah, they called it <laughs> dead lady juice. <laughs> uh-huh. Ew. <laughs> okay, so I, I've seen bodies that have been floating before, and it is probably the nastiest thing you can ever see on a body. And I can only imagine the juice. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, it was 24 I, days yeah, that she was in that she tank. She had been in that tank, and that's just... Could you imagine? I, and what if I'm ever staying anywhere and there's any discoloration in my water, I am not doing anything with that law of water. I want to drink it. So, you know, what's, oh. what's oh. funny, so I was looking up what, what you were talking about earlier. I was like, well, right now I'm actually watching this Elisa Lam video in the elevator thing, which is... Because I haven't seen it. So I'm watching it as we're talking about it. But um, uh, the only thing I could find lawsuit-wise was people suing over uh, her death. Uh, there was her family doing neg- negligent lawsuit, but there was a couple named the Cots who sued the hotel because they were promised when they paid for their hundred and forty dollars for two nights, or it was one hundred fifty for two nights, that they would have clean running water that was drinkable, and hmm. they were not provided with that. And so no. they were sued the hotel. Did they win? I doubt that, it. That was an, it'll be an it's not like that's a negligence thing on the hotel's part. They don't know. They didn't. That's know. true. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. This is the part that uh, I find disturbing in a sense, right? So it wasn't until day 24 that she was found. Mm -hmm. But her body was in there for 23 days prior. So people were still showering. Drinking. Drinking. Brushing their teeth. Brushing their teeth with her her body water. You're assuming she was in that water the whole 23 days. What if she was put in there, like, day like, 20 or day 15? Yeah. I would have to see the body to tell you how long it's been in there. Yeah. I I wouldn't want to find out. I don't want to know either. But, you <laughs> but know. Does, but even still, it's gross to think, yeah. you know, that people were almost a whole month in her yeah. dead lady juice. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but, but still, it just it does lead. There's so many questions with it. You know, it, like Terry said, it could have been. Something where it, she, it was a body dump versus, yeah, you know. Um, so the coroners they did their uh, they did their uh, investigation and, and autopsy, and they determined that it was accidental drowning. Um, but her bipolar disorder was a significant contributing factor to her death. But here's the odd thing: is they found her medication in her blood, so she wasn't even off her medication. See, I heard opposite of that. Yeah, the Netflix thing says that she had been off it. Okay, but there's a lot of conspiracies on whether her toxicology report was doctored. Was fudged. Was always, fudged. always a because, possibility. Because the funny thing is, is they're saying, because some of the research that I found said they found her bipolar medicine in her blood, but they couldn't find any other drugs in her blood. So, because they said that her body had been in there for so long that a lot of the toxins had already left her stream, how it left her bloodstream. But how would they know that she was on her bipolar medication? How could they test that but not test the other drugs? Hmm. How could they get the results of one and not the other? That's well, my question. It's not like this is the 80s either. I mean, this is 2013. I mean, right. yeah. yeah. We had PlayStation 3 by then, right? Oh, I don't 2018? know. 2018? Thir- 13. 13. 13. Oh, no. That's threes. I don't know. Not we have the technology, right? They could do it. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. Why is it so inconclusive? I mean, I'm gonna have to rewatch it because I swore that they said that they her medication was in her room and no. they went through and they counted the pills. Yeah, because her medication she hadn't been taking them because she had like a full supply, and, and had she so. been taking them even before she disappeared, she wouldn't she shouldn't have had nearly that many pills. And I could easily see two differing sources out there putting. I mean, yeah, you see, you, exactly. we find that in pretty much everything that we. Oh yeah, in, the contradiction yeah. and everything. Yeah. For sure. well, well, go ahead. No, no, go for it. I was gonna say, so the the they released her video of the surveillance camera before they actually found her, and so there was already like Facebook groups trying to figure out you know where she went and trying to figure out the story of this whole surveillance video. They found out there was like almost a minute missing from the surveillance video. I did hear that. I remember this that. This is the so, elevator video? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so the, the elevator video has been doctored. Yep. Apparently. Like, even, like, the timeline on the bottom of it is kind of, like, scrubbed, so you can't really see. Oh, no, like, you can't tell anything. It looks like Klingon. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. there's a lot of complaints about that. 
And so all these people were like on a mission to try to find her just having this video. And the reason why they released this video is because at the time, maybe you can help me remember this because I can't remember the guy's name. There was a police officer in California that be- that became a police murderer. You're talking about Mark Furman with the Rodney? Or... I don't know. Hold on. Mark Furman was the uh, O.J. Simpson. Sorry. No. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who you're talking Once about. Once I say his name, you're going to remember. Sorry, I don't. I should. But no, yeah, watching this video, it was she's definitely talking to something. I'm looking at this. I'm like, that's not just someone who's having a bipolar episode. She's talking and interacting with something, not a someone, something. Christopher Dorner. Uh, you don't remember this? That name does sound familiar. Okay, I remember. I, I remember. The, the weird thing is, is I remember more about Christopher Dorner than I remember about Elisa Lam at this time, because he was um, ex-military, retired, and then he was a police officer, and then he became a police killer. And he was on like this spree of, and so a lot of the police force that they had doing the search for Lee Salam got pulled to go deal with this situation of Christopher Dorner, and that's why they ended up releasing the footage to try to get more help from the from the public, public yeah. because they were getting so slimmed down on their resources of their own police officers. Okay, I want to watch this video with a medium who can see stuff in the videos. Yes. And see what she's talking to. And see, yeah, yeah. if they can see anything. See, there. and at one point when the door is being held open, she goes out and she kind of goes to the left of the screen down the hallway. Mm-hmm. And people say that there is a foot that you can still kind of see there. And then it disappears. Mm. But they I've tried seeing that. But I... they don't know if it's her foot or somebody else's foot. And there's a lot of conspiracies that something or someone was out there holding the door open. But she goes in there and she pushes all the buttons right down the center yeah. of the panel. And the very bottom button in the middle is the hold the door button. See, it's yeah. fuzzy enough. Yeah, hold door. <laughs> hold door. Hold the door. Hold door. <laughs> but no, it's funny enough. It's like you can't quite tell if she pushes all of the buttons or if she just pushed. That she goes down you the don't center. Know if she, yeah, but you don't know if she hit the, that so, one. So some of the YouTubers and the bloggers actually went into the hotel to go do and see this. But she's playing peekaboo with something and then she's hiding around the corner. Yeah. And um, so they went there and they timed it. And when you hit that whole door button, it was t- it would keep the door open for two minutes. That's which is a really long, long time. That's a considerable long time. Long time. A long time because people kept figuring why didn't the door close. And I think that's where people were talking about that there was missing time. Because yeah, they're like, that's why there's that minute that's missing. Because they're like, well, that's not possible. The doors don't hold open that long. Uh-huh. And so, and, you know, I, I give people credit for trying to, like, figure out all of the little, like, nuances to these things to try to find a, a, a reasonable explanation to find her. Mm-hmm. Like, And I get it because you're talking about a hotel. It's Skid Row. Like, you you know, you're worried about abduction and, and, and stuff like that. And because there's, I mean, let's face it, that hotel was not exactly a wonderful place. Dark history. No. Super dark history. Yeah. And, like, the clientele weren't the greatest either. Even if you were staying, stay on Main, I mean, there were still another, you know, 400 rooms available that weren't, you know, good quality clientele. See, I was wondering, I thought it was interesting, so I'm doing all the research on Richard Ramirez, right? And he uh-huh. dies in 2013, and I'm like, wait, she died in 2000? It's like, maybe it's the ghost of Richard Ramirez. How crazy would that be if it... But this was in February, and he didn't die till June. So debunked. Yeah, I was that so was one of the, We were hopeful yeah. about that one. So <laughs> hopeful about that one. Because I, I don't think people have tied that, or tried to tie that together in, in that light, right? Yeah. But... Um, thing is, like, oh, if he was if, alive, if you've been around people who are bipolar, like there have been cases of some crazy manic um, activity with them, and so, like, you can reasonably believe that this would be something that someone who was off medication having a, a severe manic episode mm-hmm, would mm-hmm. actually act in this manner. Yeah, see, and another thought. Um, so she was on the stay on main side, right? Mm-hmm. Which were only what levels three through, we were thinking maybe seven. Okay, this whole video took place on the 14th floor, which is technically the 13th floor of the hotel. Oh, yeah. So, so how did she get up so high once again? Because the ele- they couldn't control the elevators. Yep. And so she ended up on the floor where she shouldn't even been because she was on the ho- stay on main side. Yeah. And 
on that floor because she did get out of the elevator. I mean, wherever she stopped, I can't I think it was 14, right? Where she actually did exit the That's, elevator. They're, they're claiming that it's floor 14. Okay. It's the brown floor. So Because they were saying that when she was hitting. <laughs> well, then there's an orange floor. And there's <laughs> well, because as she was hitting the buttons, if you're already on that floor, the light's not going to light up. And that's, oh, that's how they true. that's how they kind of figured out she was on the 14th floor because as she was hitting the buttons, there was the one that wasn't lighting up, which oh, was number 14. Gotcha. But she did get off the elevator, and at one point, yes. And they're like, "Well, how did she get onto the roof without notifying everything uh-huh. or anybody?" Right. Well, those areas are supposed to be alarmed to, so that people, you know, the the front desk knows that people access. Yeah, because if they go through the roof access door, there's an alarm that goes off down at the front desk to let them know the roof right. access door has been opened. They're supposed to be, except it wasn't working. No. Because I heard that they, after they found her body, they checked the door and it did work. Yeah, see, Ooh. I've heard both. Now yeah. it goes paranormal. But, but Netflix had Aliens. A, Netflix actually <laughs> had a... Uh, the Netflix documentary actually had a much more plausible solution for that. On that floor, if you went to where the access door was to the roof, if you just hung a left and... You go out the window. Go out the window, onto the fire escape, and whoop, up right to up the to roof. The top. Mm-hmm. And there you go. And people had been doing that going up to the roof because, you know, there's all sorts of other stuff they're finding up on the roof that oh, shouldn't yeah. be there. Condoms? All kinds of stuff. Oh, my God. Probably. Under- aliens. Aliens. <laughs> aliens. <laughs> Lala aliens. Alien party. Pepsi cans. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it, the roof was accessible without going through the roof access door. Yeah. Um, so, it's it's definitely an interesting scenario. Yeah, there's so many conspiracies about this. Yeah. Um, because, like, with her hitting all the buttons down the middle of the, the elevator, there's a theory that it was a Korean elevator game. Have you heard about this? No. Okay. <laughs> Let me find it here. So the Korean elevator game requires a building of at least 10 stories high and one player to enter the elevator alone and press a series of buttons in order to open a gateway to a parallel dimension. The new dimension looks much the same, except for its dark electronic devices don't work there. And once the elevator door reopens, you'll see nothing outside the windows but a red cross. If anything seems off, you're not supposed to leave the elevator. Huh. Well, she's definitely talking to something there after she does it. And what year was this game invented? I don't know. It's more... Well, I and I've heard of this, so you know those... uh, exploring urban explorer videos that i watch on youtube sometimes yeah yeah so one of those that i watched they went to the CISO hotel and they played that game and you can it's on youtube you can watch it and did they go to a parallel universe i did not finish it i was working at the time i just had it on next to me but yeah yeah man that is just that is interesting yeah see and like the police never ever found any evidence to suggest she killed herself that it was suicide um it doesn't explain like all the events leading up to her death and how she got in the water tank when she could have just jumped off the roof like everybody else. Yeah. And, and if she was trying to commit suicide. And that's, and I came up with a thought process on that too uh, when we were watching it. And I wonder if it was it truly like an accidental thing, right? Because like if you're having these manic episodes, right? Uh huh. You're like, oh, I'm going to just go jump in this tank. And then you realize that you can't get out. Yeah. Well, now or she, screwed. or because she's having these episodes, she's easy target for those yeah. unknown things. Yeah. So who's to say that they didn't lead her to do it? To do yeah. it. Yeah. Because that was like one of the problems is she was in the tank, and once you get in the tank and you fall down in, how can you reach back up to close the hatch? So I heard I, we heard that the hatch was open. See, because now this is they there's. Conflicting reports. Conflicting reports whether it was open or closed. Because here's the thing. The maintenance worker was the one who found her. Yes. Yes. And I think he went up there and I think it, it was opened and then he shut it. Went down and told the manager he found the body. Mm. And then the police were called and everybody mm. went up there and the hatch is now closed. So that would explain the duality of the hatch that it was found open. Open versus being found closed. And, and, and that makes sense too. Like, I don't know if, if you came across that, right? Uh-huh. You're like, oh, let's close that down. Like, let's, yeah. Let's not look at that for a minute. Let's let the cops come in. That way they know what's undisturbed type uh-huh. of deal. See, and I think he might have just forgot that he closed it. Just like 
oh my gosh, I found this body. What am I supposed to do? And just in the hustle and bustle of everything, you know, he just had a brain cramp and forgot that he closed it. And he actually did find it open. Nobody knows. Yeah. That's so the, so if she did fall in or if she did jump in and the hatch was open, there's no way for her to reach back up there and reclose it. There's no way no. to get out of that tank once you're in. No. And the thing is they're 10 foot tall water tanks uh-huh. and they have completely vertical sides uh-huh. and a little ladder, like a little like wrong ladder you got to climb to get up there. So if it was a person or two people, right, who... Uh, kidnapped or murdered her or whatever, then shoved her body in the tank. The ability to lift someone up and carry them up there is severely hampered. Well, and they said that there were no marks on her body. Yeah. No scrapes, no cuts, no bruising, no nothing. Yeah. They didn't even show that there was a struggle or a fight. So if someone hauled her unconscious body up there, there would have been scrapes or some sort, you know, and then pushed her through there. Or even a, you know, see. Then her cl- clothes were found in the bottom of the tank too. Yeah, which means she was in she was in her clothes when she went into the. Yes. tank. So there's you know a theory that maybe she stripped them off to help from being weighted down to not drown. Exactly. Yeah. So it, the uh, Korean elevator game started making the rounds on Korean social media in 2009 to 10. Okay, this is um, 2013. And it looks like the, the, so it's this, early this person said that the, in any language, the earliest that they've been able to find. It was dated November 22nd of 08. Okay, so that's... So it's still within a few years. That's definitely... Well, I mean, as long as so it, it predates, it right? Around. It had been around, yes. It, it have to... It's like, oh, yeah, it came out in 2018. Well, that's not going to be accurate. Well, I can see him making it up because of this video. Well, true, right? But... Yeah, it, it's... Uh, yeah, it, it's... It's a tough one to, to work through. I... I mean, I have my thoughts on on what happened to her, mm-hmm. um, and they they Is it aliens. No, <laughs> definitely not aliens. Yeah, because I mean, there's conspiracy that somebody in the hotel, an employee, had something to do with it. I mean, on her blog uh, a couple of days before, she had complained about a creeper that had been staying in the hotel. So it's possible that some guy was stalking her. Whether on purpose or not, um, so that could have been who she was trying to hide from, or trying to hide her body. And it's unclear if they even did like a rape kit on her to find out if she had been raped. So they don't even know if she'd been raped. Yeah, it, it's such a. So what's what's your theory, Josh? <laughs> um, Let, let's share our theories. I actually side with the police on this one. Suicide. Uh, no, accidental drowning, accidental. Uh, with a hugely contributing factor of of uh, bipolar disorder. Yep. I have been around bipolar people. I've seen how they act, and this would be on this par. would be in, on par with those. Mm-hmm. You see, and that's where, like, back to the creeper thing with her pushing the buttons. That could be her trying to foil what floor she's supposed to be staying on, so they don't know what floor she's getting off on. Right. But. But no, I agree. I agree uh, that it's it's an accidental drowning because of because of that. Well, I think it's an accidental drowning, sure. I don't think she intended to get out there and commit suicide. But personally, so I'm going back to the old days where any kind of a mental disorder is demons, right? I think that there was something negative there that was controlling her and taking advantage of those those weaknesses that she had. And I think there was something nefarious that kind of led her to into that predicament where she, like I said, so it's accidental drowning or murder by ghost. I don't know. Yeah, murder well, by murder by demon. Yeah, because you know, does that make sense? Well, yeah, it makes total I, I sense. Have no with, evidence, but that's just kind of what. With all of the numerous suicides, murders, the bizarre accidental deaths, you know, there's something there's there. Got to be something there. There's that, something that propagates there. these things. At you know? least one. And with, like, the ghost stories, you know, some say that Lam was being tormented by an evil spirit in the elevator, while others say she was actually possessed by a spirit that forced her to commit suicide. See, I don't know if she was necessarily possessed, though, because you know, in order to be possessed, you have to invite that. Yeah. You have to invite them in, but they can but, still control, though. But you wouldn't know, to a point. like, like the possession That's aspect true. of it, like... 
I don't know if that's like a reach in that avenue, but in in the same Probably. token, like you don't know, right? Like I'm I'm guessing that you could be around someone who is possessed and not really have a lot of inkling that they are possessed. Other than they're like, dude, you are batshit crazy. Well, there was somebody on our on our old team that said that they swore they were driving down I-15 in in uh, Salt Lake or Utah County, and they looked over, and there was a guy that was driving that was not himself. He was definitely, they swear up and down he was possessed. Yeah. So I mean, I'm, and I'm sure if that's the, I mean, uh, I, I don't know. You know, you, you mean you take the take everything with a grain of salt in that avenue, right? But. Sure, like if you see someone who's definitely not themselves and they're driving around, how many people that they interact with daily that doesn't think otherwise, right? That they're just maybe a little bit eccentric. <laughs> What's your thoughts, Jamie? Mm, well, I, I've been around bipolar people. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of what I see on the video, her behavior. Um, I've seen it before. So. Would you care to share? No. Okay. <laughs> I know the story you're talking about. So. Because if someone listens, okay. Yeah. Yeah, do you care to share off? off? I will. Okay. I will. Um, so it, it's very on par. Um, however, that's not to say in the state of mind that she was in mm-hmm. and off her meds, that there isn't with all the dark history and energy in that place that something couldn't have influenced her and led her. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and so. And that's true, right? Because, like, let's face it, like, demons, they have one goal, right? Mm -hmm. Their goal is to collect souls. Mm -hmm. And they're going to do it by hook or by crook, in a sense, right? You know, and so, like, their their whole point is to get you to commit suicide in that avenue, isolate you, keep you down, drag you down to the bottom, and then, you know, get you to the point of, of suicide. So... Um, it it would make sense in that avenue, and and of course, if you have a mental illness, you're much much more vulnerable. And even just with that that whole area there, I mean, you're looking at an area where there's prostitution, drugs, violence, murders, uh, you know, just on this on the street, right, just around there. Yeah, that place has to be chuck full <laughs> of of negative entities that just thrive. Oh yeah, well, it's a breeding ground. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know. and it's, it makes way too much sense for me that something negative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and then, like, that, you know, we bring back to the her. last episode with Ramirez, right? I mean, you have a devout Satan, Satan worshiper, essentially, you know, staying in that hotel. Mm-hmm. So, like, what bad juju came with him and stuck around? So, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty, con- personally, I'm pretty convinced that he had a whole... Now, he might have actually even been full-on possessed. That would make yeah. sense. I mean, he was like... Hail Satan on all these things. And, and yeah, you know, I mean, it's so much invitation. That I, it makes sense that he's got like a whole herd of things following you know, him around, demonic and... entities riding on his shoulders. Yeah, there's definitely some kind of a black cloud hanging over that hotel for sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, let's, let's face it. Like, hey, we opened up two weeks, two days later, two weeks, whatever it was. Someone, within the first month, yeah. Within the first month, someone commits suicide. Uh-huh. You know, and then you can chalk that up to coincidence. In a sense, coincidence only goes so far, right? Because right? then you're like, well, there's a lot that are happening, and there's a lot of stuff going on, and and I know, like, uh, Vegas in itself, right? There's a lot of people that go to Vegas to commit suicide. We saw it. Um, yeah, we did. We were checking into Binions, and uh, somebody we were at jumped the counter off. There. And like, somebody I jumped running off. In, was like, call them and we got a jumper. Somebody jumped off the parking garage as we were checking in. Oh yeah. man. So okay, so I've got a theory. Completely off its rocker, but it, I'm going to throw this out. Is here. this your theory or one you no, found? This is one that I found, and it's for all of our Harry Potter fans out there. Oh joy! Okay. Dumbledore did it. <laughs> Voldemort. <laughs> so, um, you of whom we do not, do not speak. So there are some conspir- conspiracy theorists that have stepped up to share their biv- their bizarre version. So apparently, Elisa posted online about a, con- a Pentagon funded invisibility cloak project right before she died. This project had been in the works for the United States and South Korea for some time, and many have speculated that the government or even a private company may have ordered her assassination for interfering with oversharing on her social media. Perhaps her strange behavior in the elevator wasn't so strange when we couldn't see her because her assailant was wearing an invisibility cloak. 
<laughs> wow. That's a, that's a reach, but okay. That's a reach. That is a huge stretch. <laughs> that is... Wow. <laughs> wow. I, I, I don't know where to go with that if, one. If where do you could, go? Yeah. If they could actually make an invisibility cloak, can I please have one? <laughs> well, Sign me up. Here's the thing. How many like, times I want to be a fly on a wall? Right? So bad. But here's the thing. like, So they were doing this invisibility cloak. Like, First of all, like, she's not South Korean. No. So uh, she's Cantonese. Uh-huh. Uh, which, she's and from Canadian. Canada. So, like... <laughs> It makes no sense it's whatsoever. not even the right part of the globe. And then on top of that, <laughs> Clintons. <laughs> I, I typed out. I said it was the Clintons. She got Clintoned. She Clintoned. Um, but on top of that, like, if they did have an invisibility, let's say they have an invisibility cloak, right? Great. It's so far out there and so well, wild. How would she know about it? She's That's a, a college good... student on vacation. Right. <laughs> But even if she like, even if she was one hundred percent correct, all they had to do is, I mean, like you're at the realm of easily plausible deniability. Like, no one's got that type of technology. Oh, yep, she's a crazy person, and then you're done. Mm-hmm. Like, you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to off somebody because of that. No. no. Okay, so now an even more crazy coincidence. Have you heard about this? The tuberculosis. Did you hear about this one? No, but okay. I haven't heard of tuberculosis either. What is no, that? No, you've heard of tuberculosis. <laughs> okay, the so plague. during the time frame of which Elisa Lam was staying at the Cecil Hotel, a severe tuberculosis outbreak happened on Skid Row. Okay. And um, the strange part is the TB test that was being used in this area, the name of it was an enzyme-linked immunosorbent essay, in short called Lam Elisa. I did hear this. So. Okay. <laughs> um, the, the, and the TB patient's side effects include confusion, abnormal behavior. Lamb's toxicology screening didn't find anything strange in her system, but many conspiracy theories think that the drug test results were forged and altered in some way because of all the delays in the report's release. Um. There are those who think that Elisa Lam never existed and the case was fabricated to distract from the intentional government-sponsored TB TB outbreak and testing. This would ensure anyone who tried to research the test Lam Elisa will only be met with a flood of information on Elisa Lam. And her death was a sacrifice. Huh. Wow, that got dark. <laughs> Darker, yeah. It, it's crazy how many different scenarios people have come up with this. That's a really anti-government view of... Well, that's the world we live in right now. Well, that's true, but like, wow. Like, that's a, like a huge government conspiracy test uh-huh. theory. But I think you could also see, like, if that's a side effect of the test, right... Yep. Then that would fall in line if she got tested, mm-hmm. but there probably would be record of her getting tested. Yeah. Maybe unless they did like a mobile unit unless type of, there type was of deal. this conspiracy and that wasn't her name and wasn't really who she was. Yeah. Um, but except, then, how do you create her family, her parents? Her, you know, they're they're actors. Like that's true. They faked the moon landing, so if you can fake the moon landing, <laughs> you can fake this. Well, they faked like the life of uh, you know. Jim Carrey's best character. Yeah. Uh, Jim Carrey. Like, yeah, for yeah like, Jim Carrey. Truman. What, 40 years? Truman, Truman Show. Yeah. yeah. yeah so I, that was real, right? I know. I agree with you, Josh, though. I 100% think that this is just very simple black, white, and people are trying too hard to find more than what's there. Yeah. I, but let's face it. Like, if you want to get your name out there or, or get clicks or views or anything like that, all you got to do is come up with some crazy ass thing. Yep. And people will start looking. Or down. a hotel that is not making any money. That oh, now yeah. people are now hoarding there to see the elevator, see the room she stayed in, try well, to break the break, investigate. That happens investigate. all the time. We we yeah. know of a restaurant here in uh, in Utah that food wasn't very great, but they made a lot of money off of paranormal yep. investigations. So Except they don't longer uh, investigate. No, but We're not, no. Well, they don't but, longer serve food there anymore. But anyway. the the increase of people coming and staying in that hotel after this happened mm-hmm. 
increased oh, yeah. their cells so high. Because there's a lot so of sick high. people out there. Because there's, yeah. Yeah, we're part of that group a little bit. So. <laughs> I would investigate there. I would not want to stay there, though. Ugh. I don't know if I would. I would want to. I don't want to sleep there. It's like I'll go in, but then I want to go somewhere else. Oh, give me a private. Give me a private floor. I think no. At fourteen no. bucks a night, I think we can no, get a floor. No. Rent the whole floor. Yeah. Well, to investigate, yeah. sure, but I'm not sleeping there. You gotta wonder how many pet bugs were there. Okay, no, Ew. I'm not staying there anymore. <laughs> I'm not spending the night there anymore. Yeah. I'm not even sitting on the bed. Yep. I wouldn't. So that's the Cecil Hotel, people. Yeah, it's uh, creepy. It's super creepy. Um, and the funny thing is, is like before we even watched the documentary, I knew nothing about the CISO hotel other than that there was uh, at least a lamb was found in the tank and that was it. Yeah. And then I don't think a whole lot of people even knew the whole story about everything that had happened there until her too. No. Yeah. And I think there was it, no need for it. No. And I think it was a Netflix documentary that really brought all of that stuff to light. Uh huh. Yeah. That and ghost adventures, of course. I've not seen that one yet. I have not either. I haven't either. I haven't but we do have Discovery Plus. Hey, we have Plus, Discovery so Plus now. <laughs> Let's go upstairs and watch it. Go Merry check Christmas. it out. Laugh your ass off. Merry Christmas. We it's have only, Discovery it's Plus. It's only 1.30 in the morning. We, could, we have time. <laughs> <laughs> we have like, time for a whole season right I now. I don't have to be to work till 8. It's okay. That's right. So anyway, we hope you enjoyed the show. Um, if you didn't... We're sorry. Don't, don't tell us about it. <laughs> yes. But if you liked it, tell your friends. Absolutely. Uh, um, come find us on Facebook at uh, the Paranormal Peeps Podcast. Um, join our page, or uh, yeah, join our page. Follow us, like our posts. Yeah, you and can give- find us on Instagram at Cold Spot underscore Paranormal underscore Research. Jamie's a robot, in case you were wondering. And that's time, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Cold Spot underscore. Cold Spot underscore Paranormal underscore Research. Come follow us, like us. Find us on iTunes. Give us a review. We need a review. We, we do. do. A we good some, review. Yeah, Let us leave know. Some good reviews. <laughs> Don't leave any bad reviews because that's just hurtful. And if you why, have any, if you have negative that? stuff to say, just send it privately. Don't put it out in the public. <laughs> yeah, you can uh, you can message us on yeah. Facebook and let us know uh, if there's something we need to fix. Yeah, if you have if you have something negative to say, write your congressman. <laughs> in the meantime, stay ghosty, my peeps. Thank you for listening to the Paranormal Peeps Podcast. You can find us on social media at Twitter at CPR Paranormal, on Facebook at Paranormal Peeps Podcast and Cold Spot Paranormal Research. And you can find us on Instagram at Cold Spot underscore Paranormal underscore Research.